ten years ago today, the coronation of His Imperial Majesty Emperor Jonathan I took place in Parliament Hall in the Imperial Residence, Rive. This short documentary will revisit that ceremony and explore the regalia and symbolism involved. However, first we must ask, what is an Austonesian coronation? Three of Austonesia's four emperors have had coronations. These were Terry I in 2009, Esmond III in 2010, and Jonathan I in 2013. The first coronation, that of Terry I, begun to be planned in November 2008 with the passage of Act 26, followed by Act 57 in February 2009. This legislation established a basic form for the coronation. The emperor would wear regalia, swear an oath, and then be crowned by the founder, his son, the then Crown Prince Jonathan. The coronation of Terry I took place on the 20th of May 2009. The second coronation was that of Edmund III, and took place on the 18th of September 2010. This was a far more spontaneous affair. The emperor visited Rive and decided then and there he would have a coronation. Unlike that of Terry I, however, Edmund III's coronation saw him crown himself in the style of the Russian emperors, emblematic of his own aspiration towards absolutism. September 2011 saw a new Austronesian constitution come into force. Article 4, Section H provides instructions for how a coronation is to take place, calling it a ceremonial reaffirmation of the legitimate rule of the monarch. One of the requirements for a coronation is the use of the imperial regalia, and it is these ceremonial items that we will look at now. The focus of a coronation may well be on the crown, but a monarch must look the part in other ways as well. When plans got underway for the coronation of Terry I in 2009, a pressing question was what he would wear. In early May, a drama group based at the nearby Carshalton Methodist Church donated an item from their costume department to the imperial family. This costume was of purple felt with a silver lining. Purple being the colour of empress, this was a perfect find, and was adopted accordingly as the imperial robes. They were used as such during the coronation of Terry I and during that of Jonathan I, but Esmond III chose not to wear them, using a little-known law to officially designate the clothes he was wearing at the time as the imperial robes for the duration of his brief coronation ceremony. The imperial chain is a gold-plated neck chain, which had been inherited by Terry I from his father, David, who had passed away a few months before Austonesia was founded. Terry I had worn the chain on a day-to-day -day basis since inheriting it, and is here seen wearing it while taking part in the infamous skirmish of the treasury only the week after his coronation. But as time went on, he began to wear it less, and was happy to pass it on to his successors as monarch. The imperial diadem is, if you'll pardon the pun, the crowning glory of the imperial regalia. A diadem is a form of crown, but one less commonly associated with royalty of a kingly rank. Instead, the design of the Austonesian imperial diadem was intentionally modelled on that of some of the later classical Roman emperors. In 2009, two small chains, the technical term for which are pendilia, were added to either side of the diadem to more consciously emulate those of the later Christian medieval Roman emperors. The diadem is fastened at the front by a jewel, taken from a ring which was owned by the mother of Terry I, Emperor Mother Betty. With the centrepiece of a diadem from his mother, and having inherited the chain from his father, Terry I therefore wore jewellery from both of his parents at his coronation. The final item of regalia also has a family link, albeit one not quite so direct. The imperial scepter is simply a piece of polished brass piping, which was bought for the coronation of Terry I from a popular and well-known local hardware shop, Melvin Clark's. The owner of the shop, the eponymous Mr Clark, was an ex-husband of Terry I's eldest sister, Princess Christine, and was therefore his former brother-in-law. It is these four items of regalia, the diadem, the scepter, the chain, and the robes, which are constitutionally required to be used in a coronation. In the two previous coronations, the imperial family had not played a role, with the ceremonies having more of an external audience. At the coronation of Terry I, only himself and Crown Prince Jonathan were present, with the ceremony recorded to be published on YouTube. As in the third's coronation was also witnessed by two leading citizens of the nearby Kingdom of the Grove, but was otherwise performed likewise in the absence of anyone else other than the then Crown Prince. 
when he became emperor, Jonathan I struck a different tone with the approach to his coronation, in that he planned it to take place roughly a month after his ascension, but he otherwise continued the custom of the ceremony itself being mostly for an external audience. This was in part unintentional. Jonathan's predecessor, Declan I, the only Austronesian monarch not to have had a coronation, had been invited to attend but had to decline due to ill health. Likewise, the short notice of the event prevented the acting Prime Minister, Lord Marshal William, being able to attend. This left only four guests, three of whom were from other nations. Taglin I Annihilus, the Emperor of the Raylan Imperial Triumvirate, James von Pachau, the Premier of the Community of Landishire, Countess Eratoshi, a noble of the nearby nation of Orly, and Air Chief Marshal Sir Michael Mitchell, head of the Austronesian Imperial Air Force. Countess Eratoshi was chosen to serve as leader of ceremonies. As the only guest to be neither a foreign head of state nor a serving military officer, the Countess was considered the least an appropriate person to serve in this role. The entrance of the monarch into the coronation ceremony is often a significant element of the proceedings in and of itself. No great significance was attached to the Emperor's entrance into Parliament Hall, however, although he made his entrance from the upstairs of the Imperial residence, as had Terry I in 2009. Already wearing the Imperial chain and robes, the Emperor was presented to those gathered by the leader of ceremonies as His Imperial Majesty Jonathan I, undoubted Emperor of Austronesia. Again, following the example of Terry I, the next stage of the coronation consisted of the Emperor making some promises to the nation. I promise to rule fairly and wisely to defend Austronesia and to enforce and abide by its laws. No footage survives at this stage of the coronation of Jonathan I. However, he made the same promises, albeit with the leader of ceremonies posing them as questions and the emperor answering in the affirmative. The emperor made his promises while holding a Bible, an element which had not been present in previous coronations. The Bible in question was of the authorised King James Version, and had been given to him as a Christmas present by his godmother two months previously. Following the coronation promises, the Emperor was anointed. Anointing is an ancient practice used to signify the divine blessing of a monarch, derived from the prophet Samuel anointing King Saul and King David in the Old Testament. The holy oil used in the coronation of Jonathan I came from the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem, one of the holiest sites in Christianity. This church was used for the coronations of the kings of Jerusalem in the 12th century. After the anointing, the emperor was presented with the imperial scepter to wield it as a symbol of might and authority of the monarch. The order of ceremony originally called for the abdicated Declan I to pass the scepter to the new emperor as a sign of his succession. However, as he could not attend, this was done by Countess Eritoshi instead. After receiving the scepter, the time came for the emperor to be crowned with the imperial diadem. At the coronation of Terry I, he had been crowned by his son, the then Crown Prince Jonathan, in his capacity as founder and Prime Minister. Now Emperor, the coronation ceremony culminated in Jonathan I crowning himself as founder, the new Emperor of Austronesia. <laughs>